Welcome back. Today we're covering section 7.5 strategies. So this one I'm not going to do a lot of work on. I'm actually just going to zip through the files and show you what we have and let you work on it yourself. So uh, these I'll show you the answers. Uh, this is everything we should know how to do by now. Given anything like in these forms, we should be able to factor or I'm not sorry, factor, but integrate. So to give you anything with these forms, I should be able to integrate them. So step one, I want to simplify this integrand. I have a tangent x over secant squared x. Things I could think about doing, I could rewrite this as a sign. Wow, that is way too thick of a pen. Sine x cosine x all over 1 over cosine squared x dx. Let's simplify all this stuff. And there's my answer. All right. So this is one of those where I'm trying to get everything in terms of sines and cosines. And then I can use my u substitution because this whole problem when simplified, whoops, when simplified, what I have there becomes a sine x cosine x dx. I can let u equal sine x du is equal to cosine x. I could have done it a different way. And that's why there's two different answers. They're equivalent answers. Trig problems give you a lot of different, there's more than one way to answer them. Again, doing this, it's the same type of thing. Using a U substitution, you'll expand that, and then you'll use your U substitution, and you should get this answer. X plus sine squared X plus 2. Again, I'm going to rush through these just because I want you to see them, talk about them quickly, about what I would do. The next problem, look for the obvious U substitutions. What we're saying is, what happens if I let you be all of this. If I let you be all of that, then I end up with, sorry, I end up with let u equal 3x squared minus 1, du is equal to 3x, dx or 1 third, du is equal to x dx. That's good, because now this can substitute for that part there. And I do all that substitution, and there's my answer. I didn't work, again, I'm not working these problems out. I'm just talking about them quickly so you can see them and see everything from this section. Again, looking for the obvious U substitution, I would let U equal that. And then DU would be 2x dx. And here's your answer. Looking at this problem, let all of this be my u. If I do that, here's my du. It's right here. I work out the problem. And there's my solution. Go to the next problem. Again, here's my u. This is my du. And there's my solution. Yeah, this is probably going to be the, one of the shortest videos because I, I'm not going to work out all these problems. I will show you the answer so you can see them, and I will briefly talk about how I would work the problem. Step three, classify the integrand according to the form. So is it a trigonometric form? Is it a rational function? Is it integration by parts? You know, some polynomial times some transcendental. Transcendentals, e the x. So, and then D, are they radicals? And if they're radicals, this is the section we just finished up. Can I do this? Or do I have this? That was the last two problems in section 7-4 that we did in green. So giving a problem like this, I would, again, rewrite them in terms of sines and cosines to simplify. This gets messy. But before it gets messy, I mean, it gets messy before it gets better. 
here's my answer. Some things to keep in mind when I'm doing this. I have a sine x plus 1 over cosine x all over sine x cosine x bx. When you clean this all up, you end up with a cosine x dx plus a cosecant x dx, and that integrates to the problem that we have down here. Oops, put an integration symbol there. Looking at this tangent theta three, tangent cube theta, again, what would I do? It's one of those where we're going to remove some stuff. Instead of writing in terms of tangent three theta or tangent cube theta, I could rewrite them as all sines and cosines and do a substitution. There's a hundred different ways to do this, and that's just one of them. You know, I could say that's sine cubed theta over cosine cubed theta d theta, all right? And just work it all out, and then do a u substitution. So I end up with from here going to sine squared theta times sine theta cosine theta all over cosine cube theta d theta. That gets me to a 1 minus cosine squared theta sine theta d theta Sorry, I wrote something here. I can't read my own handwriting. Sorry, that was sine theta. I wonder where the sine cosine came from. All over cosine cubed theta. Let u equal cosine theta minus du is equal to sine theta d theta. And then I have all my substitutions. And I would get this answer. Going on to the next problem which is the same problem, whoops, but all right, I had another way of doing the same problem. Let's do this. All right, because this is tangent cube theta. Just another way of looking at this. I could have said, well, that's tangent squared theta tan theta d theta then I become secant squared theta minus one times the tangent theta d theta right I could distribute secant squared theta tangent theta minus the integration of d theta tangent theta d theta and then I can integrate that by doing some u substitutions also and this one would give me the exact same, actually not, it would be very similar, same answer. Uh, it gives me the exact same answer, right? One half tangent squared theta minus the natural log of secant theta plus c. And that minus goes in giving me the cosine. Here, what would I do? This is a uh, partial fractions problem, and you'll solve it as a partial fractions, right? Remembering that you end up with a 2x over x minus 3 quantity squared is equal to, it's a repeater, so a over x minus 3 plus b over x minus 3 quantity squared. You'll find out what a and b are, and you'll end up with the integration of 2 over x minus 3 plus 6 over x minus 3 quantity squared dx, and there's my answer. E to the arctan, well, I could say let u equal arctan of x, the u is equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. That's pretty tricky because we're paying attention. 1 over, well, this is 1 over x squared. So I end up looking at 
the integration of e to the u du, which is e to the u, which is arctan of x plus a constant. So there's some things in here that are tricky. <laughs> this is earlier on where we're going to siphon off. I'm not going to work through this one. These are two different answers. If you need help with some of these, I'll be more than help. happy to do these in class. Here's another problem. Uh, we could let u equal x squared. It's the integration by parts. So, uh, so u is equal to x squared, du is equal to x dx, dv is equal to e to the 2x, v is equal to dx, v is equal to 1 half e to the 2x. And then work out the integration by parts, and that's my answer. Here, here's another problem. This is that trigonometric substitution, right, where you know what u is and a is, and you end up with, this is in the form of a squared minus u squared, u is equal to x, a is equal to 1, right, uh, x is equal to sine theta dx is equal to cosine theta d theta. So now I have everything I want to do with my substitution. I end up with a sine squared theta, cosine theta d theta, all over 1 minus sine squared theta. When I do all my work, I'm done my integration. That's my answer. Again, this is a problem where I'm going to siphon things off. I'm going to rewrite them in terms of sines and cosines to make things easier. And here's my final answer. We're almost done. This is one of those problems where it's on the sheet. It's a sine of A times a cosine of B. And you look on the sheet and it tells you how to work out those problems. Here's your answer for that one. Let's look at the next problem. Again, siphoning off signs, uh, tangents and secants to get it to a form that I could work with. They're both odd, so you end up with a tangent and a secant. So you want everything in terms of secants. The secant will be your U substitution, and then your DU will be secant tangent. All right. Partial fraction problem. Another partial fraction problem. Here's the answer. I'm sorry, did I show you the answer? Yes. Here's your answer for that one. And then that's pretty much it. I know I've rushed through these, but these are mostly problems that I'd want you to work out yourself. I've done a lot of these for you. You can see their answers, at least, and you can see how they work. I think it's really important to work through this section uh, because you're not being cued to, say, do this or do that or do this. So you have to figure out which form it's in, and then you can solve it yourself. All right, that's the end of 7.6. The next, uh, 7.5. The next section is the integration using tables and computer algebra, algebra systems. Then we have 7.7 .7 and 7.8 left before we take the test. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next class.